Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Inigami, and welcome to Wingspan. Wingspan is originally a board game that's coming out on Nintendo Switch tomorrow, December 29th, or today by the time the YouTube video goes up. So you can look in the video description down below, or if you're on Twitch, type in exclamation mark Wingspan. So that way you can go check them out. That was definitely the first try, did not make any mistakes. You'll also notice that we have a new setup behind me. Yay, new setup, new panels, new everything. Pretty nice, but Wingspan, as you may be able to guess, is a board game about birds. And it is a a deck building board game. It's a deck building bird game. Uh, let's do the tutorial first because I have played Wingspan at my friend's place. My friends have the physical board game Wingspan and they all really love it. It has been a little while since I played Wingspan though. Let's slide. Whee! I've never also never played the digital version so I have no idea what the digital version is going to entail. So, oh, another bird enthusiast. You're new to Wingspan? I'll show you around. I'm Robin, by the way. She's a bird. I think I would be completely happy if an actual bird was teaching us how to play Wingspan. I'm a guardian of this wildlife preserve. As you probably noticed, this place is all about birds, but also about winning. We can just call you a ranger. To win the game, you have to get the most victory points. One way to do that is by playing birds. Before we start, you should get familiar with the structure of the game. This is the start turn pop-up. Wingspan is played over four rounds. Right now, it's your first turn of the first round. The first round, you take eight turns. Each turn is marked by an action cube. In each round, you have one fewer action cube and also one fewer turns to take. On the right side of the screen, you can see how many action cubes or turns you have less this round. And those are end of round gold tiles, but don't worry about them right now. But we actually do have to worry about them right now. Now I will show you what you can do each turn. Click anywhere to continue. First, you need to know how to navigate the habitats of your preserve. Look at the left side of the screen. Those are the habitats. You are in the forest right now. In the forest, you can gain food for your birds. Now check out what you can do in the grasslands. Just kick the grasslands. Oh hi, in grasslands you can lay eggs. Eggs are useful for playing birds. You also score one feather for each egg you have left in your preserve at the end of the game. Now check out the wetlands. This is where you draw more bird cards. For now you can have some cards in your player's setup. In front of you had some cards in your player's setup down here. Now let me show you the most important part of this game, birds. These are the birds in your hand. Look closely at the structure of the Carolina chickadee. You have the habitat symbol, which shows you where the bird can be played. The Carolina chickadee, for example, can only be played in forest. Here's the Carolina chickadee's food cost. Worms and wheat means in order to play Carolina chickadee, you need to spend either a seed or an invertebra. Oh. I'm gonna call it worm and wheat. The number next to that symbol is the bird's point value. Having this bird in your preserve gives you this many points at the end of the game. This is the, here is the Carolina chickadee's nest icon. There are five types of nests. The Carolina chickadee has a cavity nest. The other nest types are platform, ground, bowl, and wild. Nests are used by some birds' powers, bonus cards, and in the end of goal rounds. And around goals, I'll explain that later. Star nests can be powerful because they can match with any other nest type. Here's the bird's wingspan. It's the name of the game! Wingspan is used by some birds' powers and bonus cards. You'll notice when you need them. Here's the most important thing, the bird's special power. As you play the game, you'll see that birds have a wide variety of powers. There are three types of powers, when activated, when played, and once between turns. The Carolina Chickadee has a when activated power. I'll explain all three types during our playthrough. Finally, at the bottom of the card, you have egg slots. This is where you lay eggs. Each bird has a limited capacity for holding eggs. Now I'll teach you how to play a bird. Go to the forest so you can gain food for the chickadee. First, you need to gain food for your bird. That is in the action cost. The panel on the right shows how much food you currently have no food. To play the chickadee, you need wheat or invertebra. Look at the bird feeder. The dice shows which food is currently available. Inside the bird feeder are those ones. 
The leftmost exposed slot shows you how much food you can take. For now, you can take only one. In order to gain food, you need to activate this habitat. Leftmost exposed slot will activate a habitat. Click on it. Do you remember the cube? Cube will mark your first turn. It's interesting that they still literally just use a cube. It, th th which is also the same thing as a board game. The board game literally just has wooden cubes, but they could have done something else instead of the cube. I guess it makes it similar to the board game, but also kind of boring. A marks the activated slot. It's moved from your action panel to mark the you, you did it. On the left, the food icon reminds you that you activated the gain food action. To choose what you want, click on the die you need. No, I want this one. No, I want I want the split. It's better to take the split because then I'm denying this split from someone else. The games teach me how to play incorrectly. You can see the when you can you see the can't undo symbol on the button? It means that the action you're about to do can't be undone. When you click on it, you're when you click undo, it goes back. You need wheat. No, I don't. I want I want the more powerful dice. That was your first turn of Wingspan. Let's start the second one. Your cue for the first turn flew to the left and marked that you took the gain food action. Now you have enough food to play the Carolina Chickadee. Remember that the Carolina Chickadee's food cost says it needs one or one. To play a bird, you need to cover its food cost, which means you need to pay for it. Play the Chickadee by clicking on it. Cube has moved beneath a picture of the chickadee now, again marking your turn. On the left, below means that you can you chose to play a bird action. Look at the panel. This is the cost of the bird you want to play. And this is a suggested payment. If you had more, you can change the type, but we won't do this for now. Clicking confirm confirms. Remember that you cannot undo. Click confirm. Next turn, turn three. Your action marked. Oh, there's a there's a tiny little pip there. Okay, I see. The blue jay is the next bird you'll want to play. But before you can do that, you need to collect food. Look at the blue jay's food cost. You can cover the rainbow with anything. And plus means you need both. Look at again. We have these things. Do you remember how to gain food? Yup. All right. Because you played it, you have your gain food improved. Click the leftmost exposed slot. The cube is occupied by the chickadee. You get one, but you cannot get more. Activating the second slot in the habitat means you can take one food from a bird feeder. And the symbol means that if you want, you can discard one from your hand for one more. Ah. To play a blue jay, you need to seed in any food item. Take the die with the both symbol. You choose whether you want to take that or that. Now click the exchange. Click the bald eagle. Oh, rip America. Click to confirm the exchanging. Now we can take another one. Before you do that, look here. These are the cubes outside of the bird feeder. There are five total. Each cube that is taken out is marked here. While playing, you may encounter birds that use this information. Predation. Now take the wheat. You see that the cube moved to the chickadee slot. Cube always moves to the leftmost action and activates the bird's power. Yeah. So now that we did this, we get the bird power as well. Since the cube's now under chickadee, it's time to activate the bird. I really like that it actually has the bird call of the birds. That's, it's just so cute. All birds with a wind activated power give you an extra action each time it thinks. All your bird powers are optional. This means you don't have to activate them when you don't want to. Oh, I did not know that. We won't skip this power, however, I'll show you how it works. Every time you gain food, the Carolina Chickadee gains wheat. The Carolina Chickadee is not taking the wheat from the bird feeder, just found it somewhere else. <laughs> Click check and confirm using the chickadee's power. Okay.
Last turn, you cached food into chickadee. Every cached food is worth one victory point. The amount of food a bird has cached in its marked with a bird card here. Let's quickly sum up that gives you points so far. You get points for played birds, laid eggs, cached food. Remember how I told you you need eggs to play birds? You spend eggs to play birds starting from the second spot. Look at the slots, the bird symbol, egg symbol. They indicate how many eggs you need to spend. Mm -hmm. So you want to play the blue jay, you need one egg. Go to the grasslands. You'll need eggs to lay. The leftmost exposed slot will activate a habitat. You've chosen where you want to... Now you can choose where you want to lay your eggs. If you perform any of the four actions, playing a bird, gaining food, laying eggs, or drawing cards, you can switch between the habitats. You need to find birds to lay on eggs. So go back. Oh, yeah, yeah. See that? It means we activate the laying eggs action in the grasslands. Only one bird, the chickadee. Lay two eggs. It's got three eggs available. Click on birds. Click, click. To choose which bird, click on the bird. Ah! Easy. Okay. Now you have everything you need to play the blue jay. Click on the blue jay. Mm-hmm. It goes here. Confirm the food payment. Okay. Click on the eggs. Select the chickadee's egg by clicking on it. Now click on the confirm. I have killed an egg to make a bird. That's how babies happen. Nice, you have two birds played now, and so your gain food action has become even stronger. You can now take two foods from the bird feeder when you activate the habitat. To attract more birds, you need more cards. To draw cards, go to water. You can draw cards. The leftmost exposed slot will activate a habitat. Click on it. Anytime you draw cards, you can choose whether you want to draw one of the visible face-ups or a face-down card. The undo means you can't, oh, you can't undo means you can't undo. But for now, for the sake of learning, I'll ask you to draw this kill deer. The most badass name for birds ever. Draw it. Confirm. And then a brand new set of, a brand new one comes out. Shouldn't be a brand new set of three. You remember how to gain food, right? Meet me in the grasslands. Because you played two birds, you now gain two. The leftmost exposed cards will activate habitat. Click. You can see that is used. Yep. That means you will do three activations this turn. Food, Blue Jay, and Carolina. After you gain food, after you gain food, Q will go to the Blue Jay and activate. Yeah, I know, I know. We're using every single thing in the row. Right now, you can reset the bird feeder. Resetting means taking all the dice inside and outside of the bird feeder and re-rolling them. You can re-roll at any time. All the bird feeders show the same face. You can reset the bird feeder by clicking shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Remember that there's only one in the bird feeder. You can re-roll all of them. When all the dice are taken out of the bird feeder, they will be re-rolled automatically at the end of the turn. Now, please take the worm and the, and the thing and accept your choice. Gain one from the bird feeder. You may cash it. Oh, it doesn't have to. I can either, I can either score, or I can put it in my hand. Oh, the blue jay takes it directly from the bird feeder. So when there's no bird feeder, you can't use the power. Fortunately, there's plenty. I think, I want. I think I want to take. For now, you will take. Yeah. Select the take. Hell yeah. Now you can activate the chickadee. Your last turn of this round. Before you finish, let me show you your opponents. This is your opponent. The fox. This is you. Thanks. You can take a look at their habitats. To take a peek at your opponent's habitats, you need to click on their portrait. Click on the opponent's portrait. Boop. This guy has a predator. It's a barred owl. His barred owl will hunt every time your opponent activates this bird. Fortunately, hunting actually doesn't do anything bad to us. It actually just does good things for them. The bird card will be tucked every time the tucked card is worth one. All right, let's go back. To go back, just click on your portrait. Now we have enough food to play our kill deer. Look at the habitats that it can be played in. You can choose between the grasslands or water. For now, I'd like you to play in water. 
Remember, you can play birds before. Click on a kill deer card. Confirm the cost. And then we have to... Oh, right, the first one's free. It didn't cost us any eggs. And this is your first round. Those are the end of round goals. Each round has a randomly chosen task and fulfilled to gain extra victory points. If you don't meet any of the requirements, you get none. If you and your opponent tie, the points are divided by a number of players and rounded down. To learn what each end of goal means, hover over it. Count the number of birds you currently have in this habitat row. Wait, it's, oh, it's, I didn't know. Either, either my friends and I played this rule wrong or it's changed for this digital version. Let's summarize what you learned so far. You took eight turns. You know how to do all the things. You know how you get points. You also know that you have an opponent. Advance. It's the first turn of the second round. Remember that the second round has seven turns. I want to show you something important about drawing. But to do that, you need more eggs. Go to lay some eggs. Activate it. You can find it. You can choose. Mm-hmm. What, huh? Oh, lay eggs and confirm. Let's lay an egg here and an egg here. I want a, an egg on every bird. Why not? Let's go to the water and draw some cards. Oh, the cards have changed. After each round, all face of cards are replaced. Remember, if you want a specific card and a round is coming to an end, you'll lose the opportunity to draw what you want it next round. Because you have a kill deer that covered the first slot, you can activate water and use the egg to card exchange from the second slot. Let's make use of this exchange. The leftmost habitat will activate a habitat. Click on the egg. Now switch between the habitats, find a bird with an egg, and you can spend it on draw one. Boop. Now choose two face of cards and accept your decision. Why can't I choose a rando? How do I undo? Wait, what if I don't want this one? Why can't I undo? Is it, I, I think it's because the tutorial won't let me undo. I guess those are the two I'm taking. Now activate the kill deer, discard one egg, and draw two. Switch between habitats to find another bird with an egg so you can spend it for two additional cards. Take the last face up card. As you probably noticed, new face up card hasn't been replaced yet. They'll be replaced in this finishing turn. Look at the card. If you draw it, you cannot undo. Draw it face down and accept. Yeah, I can't un I can't undo because it's tutorial. The leftmost exposed card will activate a habitat. Take food. Because there's only one, you can re-roll, roll them all to play Bell's Vier Viero, v Bells Viero. There's no bug, but there is a way. Whenever you play a bird, you can spend any two food items as if it were one food item. Take whichever food item you want and confirm. Now using, now take wheat, yep. Now cash it, mm-hmm. To play it, you need egg. You don't have birds in forest, and the first slot is empty. That means you don't have to pay an extra egg to play a bird, so go to blank and play. Now play the bird. Notice exclamation mark next to your food payment. It means that you don't have enough. You can still confirm because of that. Confirm it. These are bonus cards. You can keep one of them. But you have to discard the other. You'll gain more victory points at the end if you fulfill the requirements on the bonus cards. 
There is no punishment for failing. Look at the nest builder box. This is where nests come in handy. To have a better view of your cards while choosing blank, you can hide the interface like this. Boop. You can move around, go to the forest, click on the arrow to display the interface. We will play the Black Vulture later, so I would advise taking the forest bonus later. Forest bonus card. Choose a card by clicking on it and confirming your choice. Birds that only live in blank. If we have five birds in forest, then we get eight points. I see. So we fully br break out the forest and we get a bunch of points. Usually you start off with one of these cards. I guess they just didn't show it because of the tutorial. Oh, it says what they did the return. turn. That's nice. Look at a black vulture. It has a once between turns power. You activate it once between turns power only when your opponent does something specified on the power. You can activate only once during your opponent's turns. Look at the food cost. Blank means there's no food cost to cover. You have enough egg so you can play it in the thing. Egg here. Egg. Now you've played your black vulture, you can make use of your opponent's successful hunts. Your opponent gained food and activate their predation, the barned owl. There's no blank in this panel because power is once between turns power or no action the hunt is successful you can now take one thing from the bird feeder i want to show you one last thing before we finish the tutorial go to the grasslands the leftmost exposed slot will activate a habitat you can now spend one food that you have to lay one additional egg when you do this, confirm your decision. Choose, you now spend one food to lay an additional egg. You lay three eggs in the birds you want to confirm your actions. Boop, boop, boop. There's still one turn is round, but I think I taught you all I know. Let's sum up what you can do. In your turns, you can do those things. During your playthrough, you can check your current score. To check your score, click on the end of round goals on the upper right. First, you can see how many points you and your opponent have already scored in the end of round goals. And the bottom, you can ha uh, you have points for blah, 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 blah. This is your current total score. If you're not sure what a certain button or symbol means, you can click the question mark or close. There's one final thing you can do. Anytime you access a general overview of your habitats, press the tab to enable overview. This overview displays all your habitats and birds. You can also see which birds you have available to you in the wetlands and your food is currently inside the bird feeder. Close the press tab. And finish the remaining rounds. Now if you want, I hope you'll successfully attract many birds to your habitats. Good luck playing Wingspan. And that is the tutorial. All right, that's a good refresher. Wingspan is such a cute game. It's really simple. It is also a, as cute as a game is, it's also a, a competitive deck building game, not a cooperative game, which like is weird because you're competing against other people, but at the same time, you're doing something super peaceful. You're just making a, a bird habitat, but you're competing against people to make the better bird habitat. Uh. I've been seeing Yami. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all stay beautiful.